Hi folks, welcome back to the farm. We're back in the kitchen today, going to show you a recipe that, uh, not really a recipe, it's just something that we've been doing in my family for years. We had some leftover peaches we need to take care of. So I got some pie dough. We're going to make up some fried pies. It was a treat whenever grandma or mom used to make these things. We used to eat them up, just gobble them up. She had to ration them out to us. But mom used to make them when we'd go deer hunting. When we'd take off for a couple of weeks, she'd make up a big old batch of these things. And uh, we'd take them deer hunting with us. And when we'd go out walking around, we could just grab one and take it with us. And we'd have us a nice little snack when we were out wandering around in the woods. But uh, we'll show you how to make them. So we got our fruit. I cooked down the peaches a little bit uh, just to get some of the moisture out of them. And then uh, we got some pie dough, just some regular rolled up pie dough. The Pillsbury rolled up pie dough is almost close to homemade, I've found. And it even looks homemade because you're still pinching the edges and stuff by hand. But we got a whole set of these things. This is the size I'm going to use today. And they're pretty handy for making these little pies. Use this side to cut it out. And then once you get it, you throw it in this side and press it down in a little well here. Put some fruit in there and uh, wet one side and then we just close it up. But uh, when you cut them, just come out here to the edge. So you're right on the edge. So you're not wasting anything and just kind of rotate it around a little bit. Make sure you cut all the way through. And then you get this nice little disc. And then that little disc fits right in there. And then you push that down like that make that little well in the bottom and then we're going to put some fruit in that little spoonful in there and these are a little bit smaller than my mom used to make she'd make them a little bit bigger but uh, the only other size of this little pie maker that I have is a little too big so when you fill these things up you don't want to go over flush with that because then it bulges out too much so we'll take our water and we'll wet one side of this because when we close it up we want that to seal so now we'll take and we'll close our little close our little pie maker over and we'll crimp it down it makes a nice little crimp. You can see we got squeezed out there. But that's how you do it. My pie dough is still a little bit cold, so it's wanting to break a little bit. So we're going to let this thaw out a little bit. All right, we got the dough warmed up a little bit more. You can see we've got some more made. The first one had a little blowout in the back. It's not going to cook perfectly, but it'll still be edible. And I want to show you, I got this the extra dough after cutting circles out. My mom and grandma never had one of these fancy little dough thingies or pocket maker deals. So they just made a circle of dough and then you just fold it over. Do this on parchment paper, that way it comes off easier. So you just put like a little half moon of fruit in there and fold it over and kind of pinch the air out as you go around. Kind of push up against that fruit a little bit. Close the pocket up. You don't want a bunch of air in there. But uh, once you get it closed, they don't look quite as pretty. Just push in those edges a little bit. Dress it up. And then just get you a fork. And they just came along with a fork. And crimp the edges with a fork. That's all you got to do. It's easier with two hands, obviously. It's not moving around on you. But that's how they did it. And that's how her fried pies looked. So we'll get the rest of these made up. I got one more roll of dough. Probably got more fruit than I need. But uh, whatever I got left over that, I'll just throw some extra sugar in it. And throw it in the saucepan. Make a little thing of preserves with it. And throw it in the fridge. Hi, Ramona. It's my granddaughter. All right, we'll get you some water. All right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, we got them all made, including uh, two of the old style. We got our oil heating up over here. 
I want to run it about 350 degrees. So we're going to use this frying thermometer. Um, if you don't have cast iron, and even with cast iron, sometimes I do this. Get a uh, electric skillet because electric skillets have a thermostat on them. So wherever you set that electric skillet is what the oil is going to run, and you don't have to worry about the temperature going up and down so much. So we're going to heat this oil up and we'll get to frying. All right, got our little fry station set up here. We got our little wire basket to pull them out. We're going to sprinkle them with sugar while they still got a little wet oil on the outside of them after we take them off. And that will give the crust a little sweetness. And the reason I use cast iron is not so much on this gas stove, but like an electric stove or an induction stove. The heat variation when the, the element turns on and off, you'll actually get that variation in a really thin pot. But with this heavy cast iron pot, once it heats up, it keeps a nice even heat. But like I said, if you've got a electric skillet, it's pretty much a foolproof uh, frying implement because it's got the thermostat on it. So you don't have to worry about burning things and getting your oil way too hot. So oil's going to heat up and we'll start frying and we'll come back when we are. All right, our oil came up to temp. We are frying. If you remember, the filling was already pre-cooked. So we don't have to worry about cooking the filling like in a dumpling or an egg roll or anything like that. So we're just looking for a golden brown and then we're going to take them out. You want to watch the temperature, make sure it's not getting too high. We're getting just a little bit above 350, so I'm going to turn our burner down just a little bit. You also don't want to overload the skillet because that will cool your oil down too quick too. So these are just about golden brown, so we'll take them out here in a minute and we'll put in another batch. Always make sure your oil's back up to temp before you reload it. Alright, we got those out and we got them sugared up. This time I put five in there because we did not have any problem with our oil coming down uh, in temp. So we were able to fry one more. We'll give that a try. All right, we got our big one fried. Old fashioned, that's what they used to look like right there. And mama used to make them. So I got my last three in. Those were the three that had little issues. They had little cracks in them. So I fried those last because I didn't want to foul my oil up because any sugar or anything on the outside that's going to cause it to burn real good or if anything leaks out. So we're almost done. Look at those beauties. All right, there's our pretty little pies. That jacked up one over there didn't fare too bad. That's going to be a taster, baby. But uh, that's what they look like. And uh, you'll be amazed how they taste. You can uh, just buy pie filling at the store if you wanted to get real generic on it. Whatever flavor you wanted. But I like fresh fruit because it's available this time of year. So... If you want to, give this a shot. You'll be very pleased with it. Uh, you'll know what's in them, unlike those little packaged ones at the store. So, hope you try it. Till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Come see us back on the farm.